Hey guys, in our previous video, we have learned how to write all the elements from the sign up page in our sign up class. Today, we are going to continue with the sign in page. So, in sign in page, we have three fields one is the email, password, and another one is the sign in button. So, if I go back to here, we can see that we have only three fields that are necessary to complete our test script. So, let us just write this quickly. So, I am going to inspect this. And here we can see that we have this name equal to email. So I'm just going to copy this. And of course, within this header, I'm just going to create another class that's going to be my sign in class. So sign in page.js. And within this, of course, we will create a class called as sign in. And here we'll write our elements. And after that, we also need the password. So I'm just going to inspect this. And here we have this name equal to password. So I'm just going to copy this. And here I can just. This is actually not sign in button. This is like your email input field. So I just make it as email input. And then followed by password input. And here, of course, we have to write element. So that's it. We're done. And of course, we want this login. And seems like it's in button text. I mean button, so of course I can use the text directly. So here we'll name this as sign in button. And that's it. We are done with all, all the elements that are needed for test script as of now. So we have our header page elements, sign in page elements, and also the sign up page elements. Now let us see how we can use this and how we can derive our steps from here. So first thing we have to remember this, whatever the locators we have written within our class, we cannot use that. Actually we can, but we prefer not to use those element directly in the script. Rather than we will create a function or a method and then we will call that in our script. We have a reason for that. I will tell you once I written the test script. So stay tuned. So first here we are going to perform the actions. Now whatever the elements we have, and whatever the actions we are going to perform on that element, we should derive our method in such a way. For example, in this sign up button or the login button, I am going to do the action called click, right? So whatever the action I'm going to do, I have to write that in terms of business perspective. For example, I'm going to click on the sign up button. So my method name should be like click and then followed by what is the button or whatever the elements it is going to be, we have to specify that. For example, here I will say click sign up button. Or we can just make it as sign up because we don't have anything other than that in this page and it is very clear, clearly visible that this is sign up, this is login. So I can make my method name like this, click sign up. And within the method, whatever the actions we are going to perform, we have to call it. For example, here I have to say this because of course, whatever the variables or method present within the class, we can access it using the this keyword. So this means simply it refers to the current class. So this dot sign up button dot click. And of course, we know that we are going to use the async and await. Of course, I can use that within the class itself. So here I will make my function as async. And here, of course, I have to use the await keyword. Similarly, I'm just going to copy and paste for the login. So here I will say click login. And instead of sign in button, I'm just going to call my login button. That's it. So this is how we have to write each and every steps. Yes, it might look difficult in the beginning, but trust me, this is what we have to write. And this is the best practice we can do for our page update model. Now, we know that this is the method that we are going to access outside of this class. But this element should not go outside of the class, correct? So we will restrict the scope of this element using the private variable. So I'll just make this as private. So this variable will not go out of this class. And whenever I'm going to call this method, it is going to access the this particular variable. So of course I have to change here as well. So I'm just going to delete and write it again. And here this is. So in this way, whatever the elements we have within our class, we have to make it as private. And then 
whatever the methods we are going to make it public we should call the elements within that method and please remember this should be in the format of business perspective always similarly let's see how to write for the sign up page so here we have five elements so let us see what are the actions we need first of course we are going to enter the name right so if i go back to my page you can see that this field of course we are going to enter here also we are going to enter and here also we are going to enter and these two actions are going to be clicked actions right so let us see how to do that so first of all i am just going to make all this variable as a private so you can just click on this and you can click on the alt key and then you can just keeps on clicking so that will select multiple lines at the same time and then we can use this hash and that will make the variable as a private and this is a small silly mistake here that's it right so in this way we can make use of the vs code to multi select or multi line select at the same time and we can change each and every variable like this then of course we have to write the each and every action in terms of business perspective so let us see how to do that very quickly So we have written all our methods now within this of course we have to use this particular elements and we know that this all the method should be of type async so again i'm just going to click alt and click and then i will just use the async keyword here so i will just make it as async and of course we know that within this of course we have to call the await so i'm just going to write await here let us see how to use all the elements that we have stored already so here we have to call this this and then followed by of course your intelligence kicks in and we will get all the variables whatever we have stored in our class so here i can just use that and click on dot send case and here i'm going to pass the value now instead of writing the test data or the test values within the send case directly we can make use of the argument concept or the parameter and we can pass it directly within our send case so in that way we can make this code reusable and also in case if we have to change the username or the email id or the password for different users of course we can pass it to our function or the method and it is going to send to the send keys right so basic the oops concept that we have already discussed in our javascript class so here i'm just going to pass this as a name and here i'll just pass pass this as a name right similarly we are going to do for the email and the password as well so let me just use make use of this copy paste now here we have to do the click action so i'm just going to call the checkbox dot click and similarly here we are going to click on the sign up button right so we are done with our sign up functionality let's see how to do the same for the sign page so i'm just going to write it very quickly okay so we are done with this so we have changed the variable to the private and i have written two methods in terms of business perspective now here we have this so i'm just going to change this so this is going to be my email and here also it should be email and then here it's going to be password and here also we are going to send the password so just a variable name local variable it can be anything that doesn't make sense to change or type password fully hope you got this right so in the next video we'll write our first test script using page object model and also we'll make use of all the functions whatever we have written so far just to give you a quick recap we have written whatever the variables we have we have converted those to the private variables and using the async and await functions we have called that so it will be more like of your business perspective and then followed by we have done the same thing for the sign up page as well as the sign in page that's it thanks for watching see you in the next one very soon if you have any queries please do let me know in the comments have a great day